special treat for you tonight. This work of fiction aired all the way back in October of 1939 and continues to work its magic all the way up to here and now at the end of the world, 2012. It has suspense, romance, detectives, gangsters, and a blonde bombshell to boot. Featured for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the old radio play, Warehouse on Fifth, on 51.7 Troll FM of Whitmer Radio Station. <laughs> ABC Radio Friday Night Theater presents Warehouse on Fifth, starring Rex Worthington and Penny Monroe. All that can go through my mind is where are they? Where are they? Where are they? I've worked this town as long as I can remember, and it ain't never been as bad as it is now. Everyone from your corner shopkeeper to your own church priest is bootlegging their own bathtub gin and making more dough in two weeks than I do in three months with this lousy gig. You see, while me and the other uniforms were searching for backyard booze, the Maggio brothers took it upon themselves to begin bootlegging something other than the working man's pleasure poison. Something much easier to transport. Something much more valuable. Something not for the common man. Something to raise the stakes. All the evidence on the latest shipment, rumored to be worth half a million, led me here, to this spot. So here I am, standing in front of her, the blonde goddess, the love of my life. Although I only had her for a night at the cost of my silver pocket watch, the dame who made me dizzy for her, my sweet Sylvia. Listen, doll, you and your latest boy toy are in real deep this time. You sure know how to pick them good, don't you? Be quiet, Dick. I know Dougie. He's a good man. Now get back to your detection work instead of harassing me and my personals. Dougie, eh? Your your latest latest squeeze. Squeeze. He's not my squeeze, Dick. He's my fiance. I'm done with that life. Dougie's my way out. He wouldn't be involved with something like this. Well, the mob certainly seems to believe he is, and they're willing to kill for it. That's what made this shipment so infamous, because it left point A but never got to point B. Someone intercepted half a million dollars of merchandise. Now it's just floating around out there. Well, how come they think he's done it? The radios, doll. It's the radios. Bring him to the warehouse on 5th. His life could very well depend on it. Go! I pushed the pedal into the floor so hard, I'm surprised my heels didn't go through the bottom of the old thing. I don't know how my Dougie could get into something like this, but I don't take any chances. I raced past the old theater I used to work shows at. Told myself it'd be a shortcut, but it only brings back hard memories to bear. I just hope my baby can tell me what's going on. Come on, 
Report to the house that I'll soon be sharing with the love of my life. 1634 received. I pull my car to a halt and try to compose myself as I shuffle towards the house. I can't seem too frantic or he'll be cross with me. Only three steps more and I'll be out of the rain, but not out of the deep end. I knock. Hey, baby. Who are you? Very funny, Dougie. But this isn't the time to be funny. Something's happened. Listen, miss. You must be mistaken. Ha ha. There. I laughed at your cruel joke. Now, will you listen to me? I just spoke with the detective. You know, you remember Dickie. Well, he thinks the Maggios are coming after you. Something about the radios. <laughs> Look, miss, I, I don't know who you are, or even how you know my name. But I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. You're gonna wake my wife. A wife? Then what about this, Dougie? Remember? You took me to that nice little place in the park, overlooking the clock tower? Listen, I... I don't know anything... What is that? It's scotch. I, I, I'd offer you some, but I think it's gone bad. So you drink now too, huh? Listen... Here I am, defending your good name to a police officer. And here you are, drinking bootleg scotch with your wife? I don't even know who you are. Dang it, Dougie! Why'd you have to go mess with a girl's feelings like that? I love you! <laughs> What just happened? Where are we? Warehouse on 5th. You hurried me into your car, threw your radios in the trunk, and didn't say a single word the whole trip over here. What's the matter, Dougie? You're really scaring me. Look, I, I'm not who you think I am. Well, I think we've gathered that much information. All right, Dougie boy, the jig's up. Where's the loot? What loot? Don't give me that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The shipment stolen off the truck down past San Bernardino. Shipment? Uh, what shipment? <sighs> Playing dumb will get you killed in this kind of game, Dougie. Now tell me where the goods are. Because I'll gladly hand you over to the Maggio brothers myself. If you don't want to cooperate. But I won't. Because I'm the good guy in this situation. And I'm only here to help you. Come on, baby. Tell him what he wants to know so we can all go home. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, Doug, we brought you here so the mob doesn't get to you first. Wh why would the mob want me? Because you, Doug, have something that belongs to them. The diamonds. Now, where did you stash them? Diamonds? These your radios? Uh, yes, but I... Uh, you see, the Maggio brothers have their own little side business. While everybody else is smuggling liquor. These two are hiding diamonds inside shipments of radios. Now, as these two knuckleheads thinks no one's knows about the business, they reported the stolen radios to the police with one product identification number. And that product identification number is 31174. Three one one seven four. I bought this radio over twenty years ago. I don't know what you're talking about or, or who you people are. Or where the hell I am? Take me back to my house. The joke's over. Enough is enough. All right. Nobody moves. Nobody gets hiked. Not so fast, Dick. Little Johnny here has been itching for some action, and I'm not so sure it's the type of action that you're into. Although Miss Sylvia Sweetheart here could tell us what type of action Detective Dick is into. And it's Big Jimmy to you, copper. So I think we all know why the two of us are here. The diamonds. Where are they? All right. Enough is enough. I'm going to walk out that door right now. I'll be back in my living room. This is all a really bad dream. No, no, no. I wouldn't do that if I was you. You wouldn't, Big Jimmy. You don't have the guts. Little Johnny here is not the only muscle of our organization. And I'm not the only brains either. Tell him, Johnny. Good trick with the identification numbers, ain't it? 
We got the cops themselves searching to bring our lost diamonds back to us. Quite brilliant, really. That one was all him. Go ahead. Shoot me. That gun isn't even real. Oh, I assure you, these are quite real. Alright, enough already! I told you I don't know where the diamonds are. Then he says they're in the radio. This is ridiculous. The radios. Well, look what we have here. Blondie was covering them up. And it looks like you kept the goods in the original packaging too, Dougie. How thoughtful. Check them. Don't even think about it. Sylvia, darling, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Leave her out of this. You want me? You got me. You want the radios? You got them. So either you let me go, or you just shoot me. Which one is it? That's quite tempting. You know, I really would. Except, you're the only one who knows for sure where my diamonds are, so shooting you wouldn't do much good. However, shooting your street corner housewife may persuade you to cooperate. Is that real enough for you? Damn you, Jimmy! Cross the line this time, Maggio! You're gonna burn for this. Not if there ain't no witnesses. Johnny? By the time you pull your trigger, Jimmy, my bullet will be lodged between your eyebrows. For a man of such stature, I thought you would have more dignity. What are you still doing up? Look, look, honey. 
<laughs> Diamonds! Where did you get those? I, I won't have to work anymore. I'll be able to finish the renovations and, and pay off the mortgage and... But where did you get those? They were in the radio! Doug, what the hell is that? Hold these. Wow. Look at this. Honey, come on. Somebody left it out here for a reason. I'm telling you, this thing's disease ridden. Don't be so paranoid. This thing's cool. Let's see if it works. Alright, alright. A cold is a miserable thing. A cold may become a dangerous thing. Even a so-called light cold can it be works serious just fine. Be what did I tell you? Be decisive in your treatment of a cold. At the very first sign of a cold, take Groves, Bromo, Quinine... And now we return to tonight's classic radio drama, Knock. The last man on Earth sat alone in a room. There was a knock on the door. We hope you enjoyed tonight's performance, ladies and gentlemen. All of us here at Century Arc Entertainment and Celtic Run Productions, thank you for coming out this evening and hope you have a safe trip home. Thank you and good night.